Hello ladies and gentlemen, it's Mike here at Game From Scratch, and I've got some excellent news for Blender fans because a new version of Blender has just shipped today. It is a Blender 3.4. We're gonna go through the release notes, check out what is new in this release, but one thing that is definitely new and that I definitely like is they seem to have upgraded their download server. So you can actually download it on day one. Normally at this point in time, the Blender download servers have completely melted. Uh, here I am on blender.org. If you wanna go ahead and download it, you could grab it there. Also top tip, you can also grab it on Steam, which generally is the nice back up if things are going pretty slow but we're just gonna go here we'll go ahead and download and we can check it out right here and uh, give it a sec to start the download and we'll see what speeds are like so look at this 16 20 megabytes per second from their servers Excellent. That is a nice upgrade to start with, so you should be able to download it faster. But again, if you can't, uh, go pick it up on Steam. All right, so what do we expect in Blender 3.4? Well, there's actually a, a decent amount to like in this release. One of the things is on the uh, ray tracing side of things, uh, or the rendering side of things, I suppose I should say, they're using Intel's Open Path Guiding Library. Uh, so this supports path guiding in the CPU to help reduce noise in the scenes, where finding a path to light is difficult for regular path tracing. For example, when a room is lit by light coming through a small door crack. So you can see the results fit here. Uh, this renderer took the same amount of time without path tracing and with path guiding. Uh, and you can see the result difference um, for like this underwater environment setup here. I don't think this one shows it extremely well, but this one does. So this is the exact same render time with and without path tracing. So you can see the results. Uh, there's how far along you get without path tracing and in the same amount of time with path tracing. Now, I don't know if this actually requires an Intel uh, CPU to make it work. Since it is from Intel themselves, I wouldn't be surprised. Uh, but yeah, we got this new path guiding uh, rendering there. So if you are doing rendering, you're going to appreciate that. We've got some other improvements to cycles as well. Uh, the added Sobel Burley sampling pattern, improved progressive multi-jittered sampling, uh, attribute nodes, so you can access geometry node instance attributes, uh, new mode for accessing attributes of the current view layer, scene, or world. Uh, graphic driver, so Intel Arc on Windows for like the six people in the world that have Arc. Um, you upgrade, you get better driver support. Um, also, new option to bake specular effects from active camera view instead of above the surface. Use of one baking textures that may be viewed from a fixed position or with limited camera motion. This actually could be used for um, some cheats in game development if you're baking out your textures. Uh, we got a lot of improvements in the sculpting side of things on the masking end of things. So uh, new methods have been added for automatically masking by cavity viewport and area. So instead of manually creating a cavity mask, this auto masking option provides a faster way of painting and sculpting with cavity. I uh, use the create mask button to to convert the auto mask into a regular mask attribute. Uh, so you can see here, um, later on, they've got some examples. So auto masking in action. This is view normals. Uh, all right, did you already play? Yeah, so you auto play, automatic playing. It's easier to see it with the cavity example. So let's see the cavity in action. So you can see auto masking. So you don't really have to, and you, you're automatically getting into the cracks and crevices of the surface you are working on. So if you are sculpting, you're going to appreciate these new auto masking tools. On top of that, uh, we got faster reprojecting attributes uh, using the voxel remesher, performance improvements when not using face sets and masks, weight and vertex paintings will use the whole modifier stack if it produces no topology changes, and uh, face sets are now opt-in, meaning that primitive objects do not have a face set attribute by default. Now, an area that people are definitely going to like are improvements to the UV tools. Um, one of the big highlights there is uh, support for this new Relax tool, which pays attention to the underlying geometry. So the new geometry-based Relax brush helps you improve the quality of your UV by mapping by making the UVs more closely follow the 3D geometry. So um, as this brush... Uh, as this is a brush, the user can drive uh, the relaxation process. So if you want to kind of smooth out your UVs, make them look a little bit more uh, to the contour of the underlying mesh, the new scalp, uh, Sculpt Relax tool should be sweet for you. On top of that, we've got some other improvements, such as you can now have non-uniform grids, uh, pixel spacing, and draw the grid on top of the image. Uh, we got uh, You can uh, rotate UVs to follow the geometry orientation in the 3D viewport or align to a selected edge or automatically guess the best orientation. And you can also randomize islands. I'm not actually 100% certain why you would want to do this, uh, 
uh, but you can uh, quickly set a random value to the scale, rotation, or offset of selected UV islands. If you can think of a reason why you would want to randomize your UV islands, please let me know this in the comments down below. Uh, this is a future without a purpose as far as I can tell, but maybe you you, you know why you would use this. Uh, and then we've got another other improvements here. So Live Unwrap supports the grab tool, support for pinned vertices in UV sculpting mode, fixed boundary edge for relaxed tool uh, Laplacian method, uh, constrained to bound for UV sculpt tools, and more. So definitely nice to get some love in the UV side of things. Texturing is always kind of one of the more painful things. So whenever the tools get a little bit better, I am always a happy camper. Uh, we also have some improvements in geometry nodes, including the ability to do a viewport overlay for geometry node viewer nodes so you can preview attributes without affecting the final result. And you can actually set the amount so the intensity of the overlay uh, can be adjusted from the overlay popover so you can see there versus there. So you can see the result of your... Um, your geometry nodes, you can preview them using this new um, viewport overlay. Uh, on top of that, this one's actually really cool. So you can sample the UV surface, and this one's probably best explained um, by watching the video. But there's this new node here called Sample UV Surface Node, uh, and basically it finds the value on a mesh surfaces at a specific UV location and passes that out either that it's valid, so it found a face there, and what the value was. So you can see what they can do with it right here. They're actually going to draw on this surface, and it's going to update this patch over here in real time through the Geometry Node Network. So this is going to open up a whole new list of options. So you see there, as they're drawing it, boom, they're showing up over here. Uh, that is really cool. So this is the new sample surface uh, node and then we got a bunch more improvements on geometry nodes uh, face set boundaries uh, finds the edge between different patches of faces corner of face vertex uh, retrieves the corners that make up a face corners of vertex retrieve face corners connected to vertices edge of corner slash vertex uh, face of corner slash offset corner in face and vertex of corner so if you're working with vertices and faces this should make your life a lot easier with geometry nodes we got a bunch of new curve nodes so curve of points points of curve offset set points in curve, uh, set curve normal and sample curve. And then we've got some generalized nodes, self object, sample index, sample nearest and sample nearest surface, and a number of other improvements here as well. I also think that they've they got rid of a couple of nodes in here. Uh, so you're going to want to check the full release notes for uh, complete details on geometry node if you're already working with it. On top of that, uh, the grease pencil keeps getting more and more love as well. So you see here we've got a fill tool, uh, greatly improved new option shortcuts. Uh, including a new algorithm to close gaps. So that's really nice. You can basically see this little gap that it filled in right here. So if you've got a couple of strokes and you want to actually fill in the, the gaps there, uh, you can now use this new fill tool, uh, with the, the, well, the new options in the fill tool and the algorithms to fill that gap for you. New method uses radius of circumfer uh, circumference to determine how close the strokes for filling. New method is very effective when the extension um, done by the previous method of strokes never cross. Um, you can use the mouse wheel or page up and down to adjust the length of the stroke, S key to toggle the extend method, and the D key to toggle uh, extended stroke collision. So there's this nice new fill math method in the um, world of Grease Pencil. And then on top of that, another neat one is you can actually import multiple SVGs. Uh, so if you've got a vector graphics already, you can bring them in. They will come in as separate named things. So if you bring in five or six different SVGs, like say uh, head, shoulders, let's go with knees and toes, all of those were separate SVG files. They will also be created as separate grease pencil objects. Um, so you can bring in and you can work in then like a tool like Inkscape or... Um, Affinity Designer or Illustrator or whatever, bring those SVGs in as the starting point for your Grease Pencil. But you can bring in multiple SVGs and they will maintain their names. Uh, and a number of other uh, modifiers here as well, including this one, which is kind of cool, a new outline modifier. And several other smaller changes there. And then we've got some just general changes across the board. Uh, so we got the object importer, new global scale factor, which is useful if you are, you know, object files all need to be scaled up or down a hundred fold. Uh, very common thing. Different tools create things at different sizes. Uh, support for PBR extensions in MTL files. Uh, then we've got, uh, which is weird, MTL being the extension format for OBJ, I think. So um, kind of modernizing the support for that one. Uh, improvements in the core, performance improvements, um, EV improvements, including headless rendering on Linux, uh, improvements to the UI, uh, better font generation as well. Also new characters in fonts, I believe, were added in this release as well. Uh, so yeah, that is the release. By the way, you can also grab the... Um, the blend file used to make the uh, actual title graphics for this guy. What you might want to be aware of, though, is uh, this one is on the 
old servers. Uh, so they're at the old download speeds. Just one of those things to be aware of. You're not going to want to grab it today. Uh, but you can grab the scene file used to create the character here. It is from a Blender Studios um, work in progress right now. Uh, that's also where the face for the title graphic for this actual video came from. Also, if you're interested, full-blown release notes are available here. So anything you want to learn a little bit more about. So say the, the UV tools, you want to get in here, learn a little bit more about them. There are more details there. I will have links to both of these in the linked article down below. Uh, but anyways, ladies and gentlemen, that is a Blender 3.4 available right now. And again, nicest improvement for this particular release, in my humble opinion, is you can actually download it on day one because their servers work, which is a lovely change. So let me know what you think of Blender 3.4. Uh, what features stand out to you? What you're kind of excited about? I, I know that fill tool will definitely be useful for uh, people working with Grease Pencil. Uh, this new node is going to make a whole lot of things possible. Uh, so I think that one's going to be very interesting. Uh, the sample UV surface node. Uh, then on top of that, uh, the new UV tools are definitely a nice thing to see. Uh, I don't really get into render and I'm not using sculpting much. So the new sculpting stuff isn't really there for me, nor is the, the new, uh, new path, um, not path tracing, but path guiding libraries. Uh, but if you are rendering uh, using uh, cycles, it's probably a nice addition for you. But let me know what you like the best in this particular release. And I shall talk to you all later. Goodbye.